In this segment, I'm going to go through a couple demonstrations related to configuring facets and item options. So simply as that, I don't have any fancy slides in this section. The first thing, configuring facets. What do I mean there? Well, that's going to be just like can be done with pre-Denali, where when I go to the shopping site and I go shopping and I have my facets in the narrow by area, by default out of the box, this is a facet, a pricing facet, the online price that is facet that is added on the website setup record and that's been all indexed. Well, now I'd like to change its configuration a little bit. So what I'm getting it is what I'm getting is the default field ID and I'm just getting the default facet which is basically rendered as a set of distinct values which something like current a currency field you don't want. So it's really the same customization technique for the most part as pre-Denali. Uh, but let me just show you that with Denali and the file that you would change for that. So if I go back into my code base and I open up the modules, I'll open up the Sweet Commerce module. You're going to see for each single page application within Sweet Commerce Advanced Denali, that means Shopflow, where we just now call shopping, checkout and my account, you're going to see a module in this Sweet Commerce folder. You're going to see a module that's specific to the overall application. And so, for example, in checkout application, there's a checkout application, 206. One of the things you'll find if you open up the JavaScript is you'll find an sc.checkout.configuration.js. This is equivalent to the front end configuration.js file. For example, for the reference checkout application, this is the same kind of thing within SCA Denali. And you'll also find one, if I scroll down over into my account, there's a my account application with the same thing there inside the JavaScript. Although this one might be slightly different here, it's inside of this. There's a my account application, but however it was done, there's a my account application .sca, and the configuration file is in there. So slightly different location, but the same thing. And then we have one for the shopping application, and that's the one that I'm going to go into in just a moment. There is also up at, there's a module called SCA, and that is for configuration that's global for any module. So configuration previously that you may have found replicated across shopping, checkout, and my account, now you need to just, now you only have to change it in one place. So if I open up sc.configuration.js, we'll see some configuration around the tab structure, um, which that tab, you know, tab structure and there's some other, I haven't taken a look at this one a whole lot, but there's some other general things. You're, you're seeing things in here about facets and searching, but remember that you can perform searching. You can perform searching from any of the applications. There's that search icon that allows you to search from checkout in my account. So in general, everything in SCA configuration should be things that could potentially be used across the applications. For example, credit card icons, that's going to be across checkout in my account. So instead of repeating those in both checkout and my account configuration files, now it's just in a single place. All right, let me back up and go into shopping application, JavaScript sc.configuration, shopping dot configuration dot js. If I come to scroll down in here, I'm going to see a facets array section that frankly is the same thing as pre-Denali. I know I want to change things here. I'm going to immediately go and take the shopping application module. I'll copy it over into my generation in area. I'll go and rename. So just like the other module, it has gen in at the end of it. And before I do anything else, I'm going to go, to go straight into distro.json. 
and I'm going to update the module there. Here we go, shopping application. This will be generation N, and the version is Gen N. Save it off, okay, and like before, I'll need to go into my command shell, turn off the local server, restart it because I've modified distro.json. Now I'll go back and make modifications to the sc.shopping.configuration.js. Oops. And here's the facet section. There's some examples just like in the pre-Denali. Okay. There is an online customer price in here, but the online, but the actual field ID, if I go into the shopping application, is price level five. I'm going to just go ahead, copy this section, boom. And I'm going to change it to price level five. So it matches. Remember, the field ID is just, it's always in lowercase. It's turned to uppercase here. So that's the match. And I'll keep maybe the name as price. We still have a translate function, just like pre-Denali. And it's been defined as an underscore extension. So that's why we start with the underscore here. That's the same as pre-Denali. You know, we can, if we have more than one, if there's more than one facet that's being configured, we have the priority. This is really all the same. Behavior is the range behavior. Um, this is a little holdover that wasn't cleaned up, macro facet range. That's what it was in the world of macros, but we don't have that anymore, so I can just delete this. That's going to be inconsequential. What's important is the template. Here I have... Facets, faceted navigation item range .tpl. If you want to find what this is, well, let's just do a search for it in this file. I did something else than I wanted to do. All right, that's strange. All right, highlighting a little bit strange, but I believe this is the template here. Facets, faceted navigation, item range, TPL. If I go back up a little bit, I can pretty much match it that it is this one. Facets, faceted navigation, item range, TPL. That's the actual file. I can do a file search across all the modules, and in Sublime, I can just do enter control P. It's called find anything specific to, again, sublime text, but it's just searching for files. I have the one that is the, so it's coming up in several different places. And that's because of one, if you look at the bottom here, there's a version of facets, faceted navigation item range in the sweet commerce folder. But this template is also in the folder that I'm just now customizing with the configuration. It's in the, or it's actually, pardon me, it's not in the current module. It's in the module that I previously configured, the facets at Gen N. Since that's the customized version, that's where I want to go and customize this if I would like to. And the one up at the top in this local distribution, this is a compiled template that is inside of the local distribution, which is used with the local server. That's not the actual place where you go to modify things. Where you go to modify stuff is going to be, at this point, the one inside of generation in facets at gen in. And what I wanted to do there was just show that just like before with the macros, there are going to be several options available in here, so the facets, faceted navigation item range is the template that's currently being used to go ahead and render, to go ahead or that will be used to go and render the pricing facet. That's what I would like to use. That's going to be a slider bar. 
facets, faceted navigation item colors for color swatches, and I believe facets, faceted navigation item.tpl is the default, just a set of values like you're currently seeing. Okay, so that's there. If I wanted to use the facets, faceted navigation item color, Dot TPL, that one, oh, that is being passed in here. If it wasn't being passed in here, if you create a new kind of facet that you want to use, and it's not being, it, it needs to be passed in as a dependency into this file. Easy to do. Modify this file, add a row here, give it a name in the next section inside the function, and then you're good to go. You don't see the default one in here, the facets, faceted navigation item.tpl because that is in SCA Denali the default is actually being pushed in at kind of a higher level of processing it's not defined in the configuration file that's the default in a different place and then if you want to override it that's when you go and make it specific with a template property in your configuration within the facets array. I think I'll just keep these other things, unclassable true, title token, title separator, parser, these were there from before. I think that's all I'm going to do and just simply save. When I save, again, I'll have immediately, okay, I have a couple of entries in the command shell that are showing up. Let's go and refresh this page. And now I have the slider bar. The slider bar has been upgraded for SCA Denali, so it looks a little bit different. I think it's a little bit nicer. All right, that's how you do it. I have the local server running. I am still going against the shopping-local, so that's why it's all working. All right, that completes that demonstration of just the facets. The next one is on oops, item options, item option setup and item image filtering. It's also going to be very similar to before pre-Denali, so this should be pretty quick. All right, I'll come back out to the shopping page. If I go into the product details page, here I have color and I have size. Okay, that is in here. And I'd like to maybe colorize, we'll see, maybe put color swatches on the color one and perhaps change the size maybe to a drop down list. So do a couple of things there. Um, these, transact, these are transaction item options that if I go back to customization, list records and fields, transaction item options, it's going to be the Oops, get the, it's gonna be the list gen color. It's gonna be the IDs here. Cust cold gen color and cust cold gen size. Let me go back into my code base. I'm going to still be inside of sc.shopping.configuration.js. So the same place to configure this. You might recall, oh, and by the way, since I'm scrolling down here, all right, here's the item display options for list, table, or grid, how the items view, and this is where the templates are specified. This was the previous demonstration coming in. If you recall from that, that's where the information is being gathered from. And these templates, the values are variables that are being passed in as dependencies into the modules. That's kind of the big new thing. They're, everything, if you want to use content from another JavaScript file, you always need to pass it in as a dependency in the, in the define statement. Okay, that was a little aside. Let me scroll down here, and we have the item options. Okay, so again, really just like before, and just like facets, just like before, meaning pre-Denali, this is also very similar, same thing. I'll add an entry. Okay, first one for color swatches, and that's going to be Cuscol Gen Color. 
come into my configuration, the cart option ID, it changes to cuffs call gen color. This one's actually set up for the color swatches already. Color, color. I've got color templates there already being passed in because this was uncommented above. Oops. It's just there isn't a cuss call 13, so this wasn't being used. I think I'm actually already good. I can just save this, and I should be able to refresh and already see. I'll just refresh my shirt, and I should see the color swatches display. Boom. I've already got them here. Nice. Okay. Um, to make a little more exciting, the next customization, I'll turn the size into a drop-down list. And what becomes slightly more exciting is I don't believe the drop-down list is being passed in as a reference or a dependency in the define statement. So if I go up to the define statement, for the item options, I'll see a color and a text and a tile. The tile is the default. Oops. The tile is the default. Text is, can be used for, um, except for the color, text can be used for the option when you're displaying read only that value, for example, in the shopping cart. Then we have color, but we don't have the drop-down list. Let's see where these things live so I can see what else is available. I think there's a drop-down list. Let me search for this file, location of the file the items views option color .tpl. I'll search for the file and it's showing up the one that's the actual full file name here is under item views templates and the one that's the full name because it does partial names as well is item views option color .tpl inside of item views 102 All right, let's go into our Suite Commerce Modules. Here's item views 102. Oop, that's the JavaScript templates. And we've got, here we go, item views option color.tpl. Well, you know what? There's a drop down list, there's a radio button. So there's a couple of other options here. I'd like to use a drop down list. I'd love to use a drop-down list. Okay, so how do I do that? Easy. I'm going to, after this option color.tpl, I'm just going to add a new dependency. This is in the sc.shopping.configuration.js. I'm going to, the dependency is a string that is the exact same as the file name. Item views selected. Nope, not for uh, the drop down. Item views option underscore drop down. I'm kind of looking at my file list in the templates folder on the left hand side within the item views module. And I'll say dot TPL. That's it. And that's after the option color. So those dependencies get passed in to the functions. So I'd, I'll add a new one in the same position. I'll call it item views option drop down underscore TPL. Just kind of following the same format as tile, text, and color. Same exact format. This takes in the reference from the drop down file. Beautiful. Okay. For all to, basically these references, these are the module names that are being passed in in the define statement. For all template files, that becomes just the name of the template file. That's what's being identified here in the reference. Okay, I can go back down now to there's my price level five. I'm going to make a copy of this. And I'll add some configuration. Oops, wrong place, facets. Oops. Here we go. I'm going to make a copy of the.
cusp called gin color configuration. And I believe the size is called cusp called gin size, that that is the item option, cusp called gin size. Label, I'll call it size. URL, I'll specify size. I don't need a colors list. That's specific to the color item option. Okay, show selector in list true. The selector is the one that's active. That's on the product details page. And that is the item views option drop down TPL. That is exactly the string here that's being passed in. The selected is, this is one for color swatches, for example, on the shopping cart. And there is another one selected, it's the selected option, it's just the selected option. If I look on the files on the left, selected option instead of selected option color. And I believe that is being passed in to the configuration file. Let's just check. Yeah, that's, the, um, that's this one right here. So that is being passed as a reference into this item views selected option dot t underscore TPL. This is the one for just, it's going to make it look like text on the shopping cart. Whereas this next one makes color swatches, colors look like color swatches on the cart. So I add my reference. Again, this is something that you might need to do for a number of customizations is add these references, not for the selected that I'm doing right now, but for the drop down, for example, you need to keep that in mind that you may need to do that. Now that everything is modular, so there we go. Item views selected option TPL. I think this is pretty good. We'll see if this works. Save it. I'm still running the local server. And here we go. I have my colors, but now I have my drop down list. This is the drop down list, how it looks in SCA Denali, the one that comes out of the box. Add the item to the cart. So that the second one, which is which is for the selected, is basically for the text, how it looks inside the cart itself. Perfect. Okay, let's go back to the product details page. The last thing I want to do here is filter based on color. And you may recall, so to filter the images based on the color selected, um, if I go in back into the NetSuite application, I'm going to open up, if I can, the McLean shirt. And I'll go to the web store sub tab and associated images sub tab and all these images. This is just like from the course. They all have the colors as one of the structural elements. And so I can go and filter on the color item option. And I can do that by configuring the same exact value. It'll be the, it will be the cusp call gen color just below where all the item options are configured, I think. Here we go, multi-image option. It's the same exact functionality as pre-Denali, no changes. Just add that in, save. See, this is so quick. I don't need to go and upload the file into the file cabinet. Quick save, refresh, I'm done. And it's already, because I had blue previously selected, 
All right, and now I have all the color filtering. Note also that my URLs up at the top, I all I have the URLs color and size as indicated for the URLs okay, in the, within the item option configuration. All right, so that's fairly basic, but I wanted to be able to point out the different configuration files how they are in Denali versus how they are in pre-Denali. Um, and again, do remember how you'll encounter this a lot, not just in configuration files, where you may need to go and add into the define statement up at the top an extra dependency that you might need to go and pass in. All right, that completes this demo segment.